in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed is the Lord God Almighty My life is full My life is full My life is full Hey, and the people say Holy, holy, and the people say, Holy, 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 and the people say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, is the Lord. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Prophesy to yourself. My life is full of your wonders. My life is full, yeah. My life is full. Full of your wisdom, my life is full of your Holy Spirit. We declare tonight that you have absolute unrestrained access to our spirits, to our minds, and to our bodies. For you are the one given to us by Jesus to help us understand the kingdom, to help us understand his power, to help us understand the majesty and the realities of the spirit. We thank you. We honor your presence. We honor your wisdom. Lord, I pray that tonight you will open us up again to the mysteries of the kingdom. May we encounter your power. May we encounter your light. Turn us into signs and wonders. Do this and bring glory to the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Just two verses. And then we'll sit down. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul made a statement. He said, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, number one, and then he calls them stewards, custodians. A steward is one who has been trusted with something. There are men that the Bible calls stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards. Like I give you a Bible, I say, please hold it for me. And every time they are looking for that Bible, they make reference to you because you have been made a steward. In Matthew 25, he made other stewards of his financial resources. Is that true? So the Bible says, let a man, please keep it there, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. But then much more than that, that we are stewards words of the mysteries of God. Verse 2 says, moreover, it is required in stewards 
that a man be found faithful. Faithful in what? Faithful in communicating those mysteries. Moreover, it is required that if at any point by the grace of God, you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of God, your assignment among other things is faithfulness. To make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that God has committed to your care rise to the reality. You see, stewards are dispensers. The, the whole idea is not for them to keep it. It is that it flows to the people. It's just that by the election of grace, they are the communicators of this reality. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Not stewards of preaching. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. With all humility, there are preachers, but there are stewards of the mysteries of God. Are we together? You know that a dimension of God was allocated to certain personalities and the Bible encourages them to be faithful, unbending, ensuring that people enter that dimension. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry to God in one minute and say, Lord, the dimension of the mystery that has been committed, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Are we praying? Lord, we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries. Stewards of the mysteries, the secrets of God. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Good evening, everybody. We're in for a serious time tonight. Just smile at someone close to you and say good evening. Are we together? Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. It's a grand grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engaged not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of its operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom, brothers and sisters, on the strength of the light, the illumination, the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged. Accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit, but engaging it is the product of faith. Accessing the word is not faith. It gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word. I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire 
to live long. I desire to live strong. I desire to be a leader. I desire to be great. Our society is full of desire. That's wonderful. It's a good starting point. Except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything. People desire to be anointed. They desire to be blessed. They desire to receive miracles. They desire deliverance. They desire healing. But they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do. No. Desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit. When there is desire, you will defy every excuse. You will defy every consequence and pursue. Your pursuit gives you access. Your desire gives you the inner strength, the tenacity, the staying power to pursue information, pursue light, pursue an encounter. Are we together? Then if and when you have that encounter, you have access to it now. The next thing is to put your understanding to work, to engage that truth you know. The engaging part is where I truly believe that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has failed very well. I have said it again and again that I don't believe the church of God is in ignorance necessarily. By the grace of God, the servants of God scattered around Nigeria, Africa and the world have done well, commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Are we together? Yes. We give that credit to all the pastors, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of Christ, bridging the ignorance that is in the body. But the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access. And we believe that the moment you find truth, automatically it should produce result. No, sir. No, sir. Truth must be engaged. Engaged to produce. This mic has great potential to amplify my voice. So that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world. But until this device is engaged accordingly, not engaged as you wish, there is a pattern. Engage accordingly, then it releases the full strength of it. I can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but I can turn and live a very, very hard life. I have access to the mic but I have not engaged it accordingly. Is that true? So please let us deliver ourselves from this. this um, it's a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of Christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage Engaging is very important. To engage means to put the, the word of God to work. You engage it and stay there. Then it is at the point of engaging the word that God's integrity is committed. There are many people when you teach on tithing, they will help you finish the message. But they don't engage it. They don't do it. They do it occasionally. How about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in Acts chapter 4 the Bible says that Paul 
um, Peter and, and, and John, they were on their way to the temple. And whilst they passed the beautiful gate, the Bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms. And the Bible says that he requested that they helped him, you know, like beggars would do. And then Peter looked at him and said, Silver and gold, I do not have any, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, he said, rise up and walk. Access. But the man was there. The Bible never said he got up. Then the Bible says, Peter, help me, Pastor Alpha. Peter held his hands and forced him to engage. You see, it is at the point of obedience that the power is released. Not when the word just comes. This is the dynamics of results. Until the word of God is engaged with faith and understanding, the word of God is as barren as whatever it is. So the Bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rise. You see that? At that point, the Bible says he leaping stood. That guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone. The power of God hovering around. How about God? Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says there was darkness from the Hebrew word tohu wabohu. Darkness, confusion. And then the Bible says the spirit of God, the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around. But no change happened until God said. And God acted. He engaged and said, let there be light. Be light. Appear. Reappear. And then there was that and he said it and he saw it. Believers are largely not in ignorance. So while we seek to open the body of Christ to greater frontiers of revelation, I am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already. Because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently, our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results. You see, the Bible talks about a certain group of people. It says they are ever learning. Is God blessing us already? Ever learning, meaning that they have an appetite. And that's supposed to be a good thing. An appetite to explore. Let's go deeper. Wonderful. Let's go higher. Wonderful. But the question is, what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and Sunday services, Wednesday prayer meetings? Many believers receive prophecies. They receive words. They study the Bible. They read books. They have volumes and volumes of jottings. Access. But they do not engage. And so at the end of it, they are disappointed. They are angry at themselves and at God. And they are almost tempted to say, Lord, your word did not work. And God says, no, 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 let's be fair. Show me what you did. From January till now, how many times did you tithe? Say, Lord, let's not talk about that one. Just did you bless me or not? And God says, look at it. Lord, you didn't heal me from the pain. And God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome. We argue we explain intellectually. We bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity. And God says, well, I'm not the one in need. You're the one who is looking for the solution. Look how difficult we make it to get the anointing. Look how difficult we make it to be prosperous. Look how difficult we make it to rise. Look how difficult we make it to get the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. The difficulty is that I think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word. 
we dispense the word but at the end of it we do not leave our sermons with the action point the very point and that's where members don't like that's why we like prophecies a lot because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you just what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back i see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around and highest they check around and see um if there is an opportunity for a joke and they you know believers we are spiritually lazy not because we don't fast and we don't pray but that point of engaging the word one of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of bishop david oyedeko in my life is that among other things his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do good master the rich man said what must i do to be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know the western world may god bless them we have received so much from them but i think that this this error of allowing god to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as i dispense these truths by the grace of god alongside all the men and women of god scattered in this nation and around the world please i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership your partnership with the word of god does not negate what god has done your partnership with the word of god is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precepts but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do then he will grant you grace 
so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating it i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man you like reaping where you don't sow. so i i just thought instead of wasting my time i kept it on the guy can go and remove your thing collect your thing the bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents so you see increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension god has given you a pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on 1 million 10 million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings there are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said lord that one is too hard i need power direct raw power to just prophesy or lay hands and god says no you'll never work that way never work that way god is revealing to us as simple as what i'm sharing is god is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change it's not because the word of god has failed it is because we seldom engage the word we complain we receive the word let me tell you what most of us do you know when when people complain about certain areas i ask them have you listened to this my teaching before i finish they smile and the person is not getting the result and he will listen now he say ah, have you listened to um, um 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 evidence of genuine intimacy they help you finish it <laughs> and you look at this guy and you know that this guy doesn't know god for sure are we together now yes then you tell him go and listen to it and he plays around while he's just listening distracted doing a lot of things gisting with friends and then catching up and then he tells you sir i just finished there are there are certain teachings one hour teaching but i finished them in three days one hour teaching in three days because every five five minutes i'm stopping jesus something just entered my spirit i see i was studying something there and i almost jumped i almost jumped from my bed i said yeah yeah what is this he said, I have not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my Bible. Drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. 
you finish a three hours message you never pause <laughs> to listen to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what i'm saying forget about results god is not a herbalist hallelujah yes. look at the aspects of your life you will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance but you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge truthfully speaking you already know what to do and the grace has been supplied but that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest that's what causes a lot of trouble what do you have in your house nothing except a cruise of oil and the prophet said that's it madam this is what i want you to do go why didn't the prophet prophesy vessels find your way to this poor woman's house say madam carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying how about the widow in zarephath when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah i don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me he said we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So, just handle this treasure is in earthen vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I would make sure I tell all those who have, you are, ah, ah, you see me and a child. You don't even love women. And start another funny women movement and say, look, there are prophets who don't they collect things from women and the bible says that she her engaging that thing all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower i'm showing you how this works how about three days they spent three days on the mountain and then the people said these guys are hungry there will be commotion here now and jesus said feed them said, ah, feed them even a year's worth of food no miracle could happen until there there was something from men and andrew found a young boy and carried his bread his, his lunch box as they call it and all of a sudden jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication who taught you that things happen by themselves it is the dynamics of the workings in terms of god's part that is none of your business the bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child nor the way of the wind that's how you cannot tell the work of god there is a part of this equation that you can never know it is sponsored by the wisdom of god for instance how your destiny helper will come is not your business your own is to engage what brings them your destiny helper can be a donkey a donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details how will i pay my rent lord i know you are faithful but let's let's be honest here and god is saying me you are telling me to be honest <laughs> do you believe what i'm saying yes 
so we don't engage the word at all at all master if it be thou bid me come and jesus said really you want to see a new dimension i've given you a word engage it come all of them stood and said oh yeah he didn't say peter come he just said come whoever walked he said come and all of a sudden peter got up and walked and it was it it was surprising peter i'm walking and he was laughing and all of a sudden he was about sinking many people see the sinking part they don't see the part that jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by jesus himself if peter sank jesus would be to blame after all jesus knew he was learning he said come obey him and perish and watch whether you will perish listen learn this i'm teaching you how faith works peter he held him and said no if you walked on your own like jonah jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience so the whale swallowed him what bailed jonah out was mercy are we together these are the systems of the kingdom this is how it works guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm you eat anything anywhere anyhow anytime no sir no sir how about breakthrough there are many of us that want breakthrough you hear people the fact that god is doing it to one person that per you see do you know why we allow testimonies the most important part of testimonies is not the result is the bridge between the problem and the solution what did the person do that's what your spirit should be sensitive about for many of us we wait till the end of it then we say wow you mean it this is how i live my life i don't sit down and tell god lord create the changes i say no lord i know i give you all the praise show me my own part and i stand up and start engaging it start engaging it start engaging it what of our family members oh god will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change and god says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself it is by a prophet that the lord brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved even if you are a midwife when you are about to give birth you need another midwife to help you that you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself listen to this and understand there are systems in the kingdom a time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. Hmm. 
is God helping us? So, so many people arrogantly sit down and say, what is there? Is it not man of God? Man? Is it not the same Jesus that died for us? And they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply. Whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment. How long? Please help me. How long? Listen, I think it was in, it was in Mina over the weekend we were preaching for... Um, bishop it was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, bishop achaya and i was sharing there i said every anointing listen to me every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it that you are anointed is not generic in results the anointing is levels when your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you, you're already in trouble. There are three ways to come out of that thing. Grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust God for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem. Brothers and sisters, in my little life, I've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone but i've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing it will rubbish you as if you have never met god believe what i'm teaching you if the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged this family now will get up and say okay we have read in the bible and let me tell you what happens they begin to pray at least it's a starting point while they pray the holy ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said study the life of saul of kish do everything they did and so they start studying a donkey was missing we for us an animal was not missing let me show you how the, the holy spirit helps people what is missing joy peace love breakthrough finances spiritual upliftment what did they do they started moving around and a servant said let's go and meet a man of god and the holy spirit says go and do likewise and they stand up and the holy spirit now tells them look there's a miracle service coming you see the word of god is becoming alive you are acting you can sit down at home and say god has brought it he said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flames you excuses it is raining i'm not very happy i didn't eat well we were not joyful yesterday those things are the ways demon spirits keep people but when you stand up as you are walking to come heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle now while you are coming you are not even sure you will meet me but you are coming anyway while you are coming you are not even sure you will have space but you are coming anyway. Are you seeing how this thing works? You come anyway and you sit down. And to your greatest shock, it was never for you to meet me. While the praise and worship is on, fire lands on your situation. And all of a sudden, you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it. After Konya or whatever program, you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying, sir, remember we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work I, my spirit was moving me and you say god this is you let me show you how breakthrough happens breakthrough is worked is like the working of miracles you know how you cook food you don't drop onions pepper fish whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say food cook no you work it how do you work it you get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that god gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word 
is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah. Mm. Sacrifices, praise, several things. You must engage the word of God. There are some of us here, you have never sown a seed. I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. Give me, your own is to collect. Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I am motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces. Is that true? Yes. When a woman gets pregnant, we are happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end. Is that true? Yes. When somebody, like the people sharing now, the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through, you know, now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that. When you do things, the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results. This is what I want to cancel from our life. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs are predictable. Hmm. The help of God is predictable. The mercy of God is predictable. Results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it because after 10 years it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now God has ticked those things with results. There are others, all they do, every miracle service is, God arise for me, they drop it. Every instruction God gave from January till now, they have not done one. Lift up your hands, they won't lift up. Pray, they won't pray. Celebrate God, dance around you know, all these things. How can I be a child? We left these things, am I in a party? You see that? I told you about dancing. I don't like dancing. It's not anything I admire at all. But it's a, it's a key. You know how drugs are. How you swallow drugs. Sometimes when you swallow drugs, especially maybe a syrup, it can be so bitter. Especially when you are giving children. They are trying to deny, but your love keeps them there. Swallow it. When they swallow it, you pamper them later on. Swallow it. Do you pity the child? Say, oh yeah, I'll leave you like that. No. That's how it is when you are obeying god don't pity yourself oh no sir don't pity yourself abraham carried isaac and said up we go when he kept looking at isaac i love you but this one see be careful some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level you are emotionally connected to your money you are emotionally connected to your title you are emotionally connected to whatever. That's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high. You are emotionally connected to your ministry. My ministry. The word of God works. It is reliable. This is how God has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today. And this is how he will help us to rise.
but the key is that we engage the word the key is that we engage the word we don't sit down and make god responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves that's not faith no that's not faith you must take inventory of your life you'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night i just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit god is my witness whom i serve that i am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results see let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are the only one rising you are you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself i'm hearing a song in my spirit hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us hallelujah lord i want to become a public speaker you dropped it here you have not engaged the word you found a scripture but you have not done anything with it lord i want to become a man of god and the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church you know sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing God is calling, let me use you promise, come. God is calling promise into ministry, for instance. Go and start a ministry in Delta or start a ministry in U.S. And the, the only thing he does is, just says, wow, I, I have learned enough. You just jump and go to Delta. And after five years, you are still roaming around as if God didn't call you. In that five years, those who engage the world are swimming in grace. Whereas you are there frustrating the grace of God. After 10 years, you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police. They say your age has passed. You now say you want to join something else and your life. And you blame God. And God says, no, you refuse to engage the word. I told you time never changes anything. It only reveals. Time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time. But God calls this guy now and he sits down, Lord, what kind of ministry are you giving me? Oh, this is this. And he's studying, he's learning, he's building. How do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people? He's learning. How do we build membership? When members cross 500, how do you manage them? You are learning. How do I grow in the anointing? When I have three to five sermons to preach every week, how do I manage it with my family life? What if I have a business running? How do I manage it? This gentleman works on himself. I tell you, he gets up and in one year, start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there. Everything done well. Whereas another person is struggling and angry. Now, this is, anger is usually a product of frustration. When you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless. 
You see, one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you, when you execute your plans effortlessly. How are you doing it? And people begin to coin explanations. I don't want to live a life of a failure. I don't want to. Number one, it does not glorify God. Number two, it's going to waste my time. Number three, there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces. One of my greatest fears, if I have any, is to walk and to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things I've believed are a lie. That's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs. Lord, what I believe about finances, is it accurate? What I believe about the anointing, is it accurate? What I believe about fasting and prayer, is it accurate? I'm not ashamed though. If at any point I find out there is a problem, I'm not ashamed. I, okay, Lord, let's look at this. This is what I used to believe. But now I'm seeing, I'm learning this. Wow, amazing. I'm growing. And you are just. Let me tell you something. There are many anointings to lift our family members, but it is at the mercy of their engaging. They only complain and insult. They insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough. And they sit down and hope and wish they will learn. You will be surprised, and I don't mean to be sarcastic, you will be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what God is doing. It will be shocking and surprising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the trouble is, you are the one who is the patient. Who cries, the patient or the hospital? Please talk to me. When the patient insults the hospital, does the hospital have tears? The hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready. Is that true? Lord, I don't want to live my life as a failure. Results can be commanded. This thing has been done before. I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry if you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry if you need members. No, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things. But then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough. The word, the truth, the mystery, the principle, the revelation must be engaged. It must be engaged. It must be engaged. There is a part you have to play. Play it and watch God. Watch God arise for you. As a mighty God and turn things around for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This thing does not take time. It just takes commitment. If I'm building a house, listen, and I have workers building a house for me and they are working, they start working by six and by night. There are those who do night shift and are working. Is that true? And there is another lazy builder the workers come by 10 they close by two whose house will be built first you see that now the amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you there is no way around it i watch our fathers of faith and i'm surprised that with the kind of results they command you still see them engaging this thing they are working it with all their heart I was watching 
a video by Dr. Paul Enenche, and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry, and the Lord's Garden, the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja. And he said just for the, the zinc alone, just to cover that place, they are spending 16 million U.S. dollars. Zinc, not building. 16 million U.S. dollars in a time of recession, debt free. Now, only a fool and a stupid person, 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10. And this is what is used for zincing. So a wise person says, this is the result I'm looking for. It is on earth already happening in someone's life. So what do you do? You follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden, rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer. That nothing will ever change. Just like that. Hallelujah. What are you doing in partnership with the word of God? Do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome? Do you understand? Then if yes, are you engaging completely? The future will show the mysteries and the things that Koinonia is engaging. It's, it's, not, it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now. But the future will tell what is being engaged today. You see that? Something I do not know is responsible for where I am. Something I know but have not believed is also responsible for where I am. Something I have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where I am. While you are seated, can you pray, cry to God and say, Lord, I repent. I've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you. But now I have heard you. I have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself. Are you praying? Some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you will have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. Keep praying. Show me what you are engaging. Apostle, I expected that by now I should not be begging for food to feed my family. Show me what you are engaging. Or are you just waiting for things to happen? Show me. Apostle, I expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially. Show me what you are engaging. Let me see it. Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic, certain levels of the anointing. Show me what you are engaging. Sir, I expect that I should be established by now. I should have had a car and a house. Show me what you are engaging. Don't just wish for nothing. I've been coming to church. That's not enough. What have you engaged? Pray. Nothing will ever change, my brother, my sister. Access to truth is not enough. It must be engaged though. Access to truth is not enough. Apostle, I've listened to all your messages on favor. Wonderful. Have you done what was said in the message? 
consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the world show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time I stand here, most times I'm waiting on God, is when I go back that I eat something. There are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as I stand. I'm not saying that's what you must do. After service, you see me stand here to see people. Sometimes past 12. Last week, I went home to one. Don't one crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there. Are we together now? We want things without the responsibility attached to it. You, before you barely rest, someone has woken you. There is a challenge. You, when I came, you saw me talking on phone and I called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere. The people don't care that there is service. Listen. Let me tell you, for every dimension, there is a price. I, I wish, I don't know how to make you believe this thing. If you are unwilling to pay the price, please forget about the dimension. There are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life, the moment certain things are not done, it will destroy you. It's better for it to have not come. Believe what I'm telling you. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah entered a boat and people they started losing things and when they were checking they said what is making this boat heavy jonah said i'm the one who if i were not anointed i would have slept quietly but because of what i carried you are suffering for something now there are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices oh god open my eyes are you ready to pray for everything you see? Because you will see things that will disturb you. You are about to rest and you see a plane crash. You are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody. And if it happens that way, God will call you and say, if your eyes were closed, you are free. But hence you cried and said, open my eyes. It's not about prophesying, you no. Know, there is a responsibility. Oh God, make me rich. Let me be your distributor. And God stands and says, as you are leaving your house now, carry 50,000. My people are in need of it. Yes, sir. Ha. Oh, God, you said you want to be my steward. Oh, yeah, carry it. And somebody comes and while you are talking, he says, give 5,000 to Sam. There are two little children. Give all of them one 1,000. And you are acting like a fool. And God says, that's how my distribution system works. The day you are not interested, I close the heavens. As simple as that. I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five alive how much is five alive 
and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking brothers and sisters let me submit to you if you ever try to sow seeds like me it may kill you in one month i'm telling you this sincerely Lord, make me a millionaire. He says, are you ready to sponsor 70 children? He said, no, no, I don't want that. Oh, God, you gave me only two. He says, that's it. Whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a give me an international anointing. Okay, do you have the grace to counsel to preach three five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself. Father, bless your people. Change their story. A text message comes sometimes you don't see me reply your text message it doesn't mean i don't pray over it do you have the sacrifice can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and god said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor. It's not just about sitting. I'm ready to be a man of God. Are you ready for the criticism? Everything about your life is an open book. Everybody criticizes everything. Can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound? And get up in the morning? Some of you who are so sensitive. I think you stole my phone. How can I be the thief? And you are moving around. And you want to do ministry? You must be broken and you must be walked on by God. Is God speaking to us? This teaching is very sincere. Most of us see blessed people and just admire them. And I look at the greed that is in many people's lives. Greed. You can sit down. Somebody is saying, I've not eaten. There is 1,000 naira in your pocket. You say, go and meet apostles. And meet apostle he, 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 he likes giving just talk to him and he will give you and this is the person holding 1000 naira and you are saying oh god when will you visit and god even scholarship you will not see for where are we together this is how this thing works so send 200 naira recharge card to your mother you rejected it Whereas somebody transferred 1,000 to you and God says, take 200. He says, how many? And it's not like there is an important discussion and God says, I'm watching your heart. You are not engaging this thing. Let me show us why we are really not getting results. Let's be honest with ourselves. Am I engaging the word? Cain got angry because of Abel's results and God said, no, no. This is not about Abel. If you do what Abel did to the latter, will you not get his results? hear me it doesn't cost god to raise help for you there is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed there is something a man of god is not doing that's why his ministry is not growing there is something a father a mother a brother a sister is not doing that's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury Every guy that comes to me leaves in two weeks. Five guys have come. Sister, calm down. 
could there be that there's something you are no 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 there's nothing wrong with me yeah i just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything after Koinonia, you're just looking at any sister who can i now marry you this one that time is going and there's nothing happening you see what we're saying A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your Bible and a tape recorder. Shakatokata. Lord, it can't be this way. The word of God is coming every day. Why is my life like this? I am 31. I am 35. I am 40. I'm seated. I can I have to beg for Gary. Lord, I love you. Something is wrong. And all of a sudden, you come there. Your friend is calling, say, leave me alone. No, you better leave me alone. Say, is, is your, did you renew your DSTV? Say, don't near my house. You have been deceiving me for many years. And you sit down and all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes. This sitting down is what we don't do. We stand up moving around this hustling life. Pillar to post. One thing is needful. Sit down first. Stand up as instructed. Don't move around just like that. It, it, see, the labor of the fool, the engaging of a fool, weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city. Not every action is profitable. It is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding. Apostle, I'm anointed. I'm surprised. I organize a meeting and nobody comes. There is something you need to know more about the anointing. It's more than laying hands. Apostle, people come to my church. They receive miracles and go back. That means there is something you need to know about leadership. You have done well knowing about miracles. But there is something you do not know about leadership. Please blast in tongues for one minute. And say, Lord, I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of this dimension. I'm tired of this face. Lift your voice and pray. Shabakata katoka sepra katakota shekata. Lekata prosata katoka shekata pakarakato sikata. Lord, I know you are ever faithful. Pray. I take responsibility tonight. There is something I am not engaging adequately. Zekete koto soto kata prakatash lekete broske sekete mara kato sebiada. Hela masena na malena mashe ana na 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 na. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. No. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no 
everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i'm no one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. Okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business, they honor men, but they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start walking and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God? I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. To, the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously only god can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars only god knows the people who project me as i sleep to make sure i don't wake up this man you see is here for a long time very long time is that true some of us have refused we have been drumming mental development and we have refused so we are mediocre where we are it's amazing how when the word of god comes people exempt themselves say this part is not for me this is the part for me no all scripture was inspired how many all scripture god can be talking about mental development and you can say me for me I'm a man of prayer and fasting. Leave that one for um, um, mental development. All those who want to become professors and lecturers. For me, this is a vineyard. And you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong, regardless of your results. L listen, being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you. Because it will bring about familiarity. You are familiar with every man of God, every program, everything. Yet, it will not bless you. Those that were close to Jesus ran away. They were not getting anything. Nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life. Mental development mental development upgrading your mind expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify christ how about people who do not understand authority this is the mystery they have not engaged and that's why the devil whips them left right and center left right and center they have no honor no regard for anybody on earth some of our parents are like that like that just say, hey, so so man has come to town which man so why are people going to go and see him what's the spell you see you see and and they start debating it and the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering he does not know that it is for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep he sits down there and a miracle is close to him sometimes in his neighborhood and he hears reinhard bonke preaching and laughs he says ah is that the wise man you are talking about? What is this one? He says, they said, Baba is about to pray for the sick. Oh, no, no, mind those people. And his kind of case 
is what is being called and they are being healed and Reinhard Bonke will go back and the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there look the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance look at students here you heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week no school fees no nothing and then result comes out and you are graduated Haba. <laughs> there are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do we are born again but everything is mediocre everything everything average mediocre local champions i'm a tailor like who well i'm, I'm here i'm patching here and there i lord i need increase and god says increase your capacity be excellent be excellent so that you can now start making clothes when you make a millionaire's clothes you get a millionaire's reward when you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today 200 tomorrow 800 today to pay 3000 and you are arguing and see arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person but you still suffer you get tired and say lord i've started i've left this level i've challenged us who has been excellent hallelujah excellent some of us relationships this is the mystery we are not engaging we know it but we are not engaging it hallelujah relationships honorable is here um I, I don't mean to embarrass him but this man of god that you see forget that he's a politician i told you politicians are my friends i'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens i'm not one of these these foolish people that throw away politicians away they are my friends oh. they're my friends they're my friends yes they're my friends hallelujah jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of elijah the first thing she did was to marry the king to make sure she was at the seat of governance then she now pushed ahab say oh yeah wait i'm the one in charge see that a true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance I went for Mubi crusade and honorable is here do you know brothers and sisters this man as great as he is with his status and all of this he came for the crusade with his wife stayed like two days together and returned back when I go to Yola sometimes with his own car carries me in his own jeep and drives around praise the lord relationship if he calls me and says his wife is having a headache you call me <laughs> there there were calls but let me show you how i will respond relationship that's what brought docas back to life when docas died she was a woman who well she said i can't preach but i can sew madam you are cold let me make sweater for you when she died the widow said no way these wicked men they are all preachers but they don't take care of us you better raise this woman back to life for our sake hallelujah tomorrow if he becomes a governor i'm still his friend is that true yes access that's why when he comes like this we honor him what is all this? everybody is equal before god it is true based on your understanding system that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know are we together yes relationships i told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationship everything money can pay for relationships can pay for it 
if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not wise there are things relationships should pay for you can't pay for the house but a relationship can give it to you i i spent time um the week before last to talk extensively on relationships i'm not going to go back but please listen to that message i can spend my time talking to you about relationship that's what happened john the baptist had the privilege his mother listen john the baptist did not study what happened around his birth when mary received the prophecy of the angel she knew it was a strange thing she had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of Jesus' disciples left and became his disciple. And he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance. He went and started lambasting Herod. Because he did not know the protocol of the palace. He thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness. The way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace. There are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places. And they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships. Many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age. Is that true? They didn't raise anybody. They didn't lift anybody. All their friends are successful people. They watch television and tell you this guy was my friend. Do you know that uh, General Buhari was my classmate? Do you know this one was my classmate? Do you know that Kofi Annan, we drank tea together? Oh God, why have you not been there? What has that relationship done for you? This is why when we do things in church like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning. The, this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future. You will see the person you frowned at in power and glory and now you will not have the same access again. It is cheaper now than later. You've heard me say we will all be great. But the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because... Of relationships what have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things I respect a lot about my dad. My dad understands relationships in a strange way. He knows almost anybody everywhere. If he's a policeman, he will scroll down. There has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before. If it is prisons, if it is customs, if he's a carpenter, even if it's a truck he does not have that stops he knows a mechanic somewhere he knows the one that fixes Peugeot he knows the one that fixes this relationships now it's costly that's a very busy life but it's only busy until the day you need those people one call and they tell someone else yes sir but another you keep knocking forever and you say God help me God I helped you since you misuse the opportunity Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
what have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them how long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone how long are you ready to continue holding grudges when will you forbear and excel there are ladies over my dead body my mother i will never talk to her but the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman justified she did something wrong but can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension hallelujah i am passionate about engaging the word i am passionate i studied the life of job because i want to be very prosperous and i studied his life i saw things that job did that if job died poor god would have been a wicked person i found treasures i said ah this is what job did not the obvious things we see there were things that job did what are you doing some of us these are little children they never look at you and smile they look at you and they are afraid you call them children remember you are not going to die young you have received the anointing for long life the children you laugh at today you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years they will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence and you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children is god giving us wisdom these are these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems these are success systems i'm i'm challenging us this engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about engage the word engage the word engage the mysteries you know and stay there stay there till it produces don't engage once and complain do you know there was a time in my life i did everything but there was no result everything to be done i cross checked and it was correct once you have done everything leave god's part to him so when people are complaining and say apostle what am i missing i say you are not missing anything just stay there just like that yes sir stay there god is watching your growth and he knows that if those blessings come you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet so he keeps you and then overnight you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing and they say where did he come from he's always been there waiting I've been sowing seeds. Continue. It says not to be weary in well doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season. If you fail not. If you fail the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman. Until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order. No matter how simple and how cheap they sound, they are engaging something that is producing my results. I have a meeting next year and God has granted me the privilege and I'll have the privilege to be meeting with I think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world a Nigerian I look forward to that meeting I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam he said I, I, apostle for what this dishonor we carry is why we never rise if I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down my knees and say, thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels. I look forward to that meeting. I've been praying and fasting about it. I say, Lord, this meeting cannot be once. We have to be friends. We have to be what? Yes. Because a friend sticks close 
than a brother. This brother, sister thing, friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Have you not seen the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. I want, they are, for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what? It is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom we have allocated 10 million to this ministry there is a mission agency we heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say are you a pastor he said no i'm just a brother in church i have been trained that my entire life is about the kingdom he say are you 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 better stand up and make ends meet a luther continue i say no not in this house we have demarcated this house through understanding exempted forever from certain things Someone comes to your house and say, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no, priesthood, our house, we have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? Yes, you better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy put his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, so." I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way 
How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. Because you are my God. Men may not believe it, they think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are my God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, let me round up. It says, For I record that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself i exempt myself Shaka -taka -taka -ta. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a generation that will serve God. There is a generation that will seek the God of Jacob. Not seeking money. Not seeking power. We will conquer wealth. We will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church 
where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of God. They are so blessed they don't discuss money again. Hallelujah. I heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because I read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than hundred times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of God get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow God calls you say sorry God I have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price Lift your voice and pray. Engaging the systems of the kingdom. Not only believing them. Not only having access to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. That the spirit of disobedience. The spirit of spiritual laziness. That does not allow you engage the word. You just keep wishing. No, no, sir. No, ma. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, the grace to put the word to work. Lord, I confess I've not been a faithful title. Pray. I, I stop playing games with my destiny tonight. Lord, I confess my prayer life has gone down. My word life has gone down. Lord, I confess I'm not serious with my destiny. As a gentleman, God has called me into ministry. But I'm not giving it the attention it requires. They're admiring people, fighting people, gossiping, and trying to make a name for myself. I settle down with destiny. 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything <clears throat> i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down i've, I've not been faithful in tithing that means i've not had a revelation about it the issue is not just to carry money and start running the issue is to sit down and say this month i'm going to take a course i'm going to take a study on it who has written books in this area and you sit down who has done a very comprehensive balanced not hungry manipulative teaching on it and you study that's how you grow you carry your issue of concern put it before you close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles don't leave it that's how winners work but all this one of try today if it's too hard you turn this direction you will still meet it there stay there and win did you hear what i said stay there and win 
let me tell you in my little life i can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable it's a lie don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend don't go near them again i want you to write a list of the mountains before you pray dance but sit down there's got to be a way there's got to be a way you read a book you check something there's got to be a way then you enjoy the beauty of triumph brothers and sisters triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges you live as if satan does not exist there is such a realm it is my desire with all my heart among other things that god will bring not just this ministry he has helped in a measure not just me but every one of us not just to a level of spiritual awakening i am trusting god for an avalanche of do you know how you conquer poverty like you put it under your feet this is what god would do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve god all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving god for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on god then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek god for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study there are some of you there are books locked up in your spirit for nations but suffering will not let those books come out because all you are thinking now is oh god let me just look for something to eat we depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death whereas there is a way a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again lord i thank you lord you know that is it's not like i don't like men lord I, I want to be able to to marry somebody that loves you it's my, it's always been my privilege to serve you serve you i want my children to call upon your name the devil had that one too he didn't hear lord i worship you he didn't hear lord i thank you for this day he had my children will worship you and satan says no way make sure make sure that this lady wherever her marriage is bury it to nonsense give her money give her a job because she has not made any statement about god being glorified in the job so she can have the job but the one that god will be glorified through that's the one i'm interested in are we together and then when satan hears you pray prayers like lord take my everything the devil says demons you can go i'm staying here take my everything <laughs> there is a reason why satan attacks he does not attack you because of you listen God is comforting us already because there are many of us wondering what is all this Lord what is this I will see something almost getting to me what is the thing why why is Satan taking my case personal there is a reason the reason is not you don't be fooled it's not you the reason is something you represent something that is of God through you Satan has seen that by God's preordination your womb is supposed to carry one of the prophets that will herald God's end time agenda and he says whatever make her marry wrong or make her not get married or make her get married to somebody who has the cause of barrenness just do whatever you can do to clamp this lady oh God my father is 71 they are still staying in a rented house Lord would you open a door for me and as you do this lord you see my heart i will renovate all the churches in our village i will sponsor this up I, I will buy a bus and satan says buy a bus for nonsense renovate which church all of a sudden you find out that the business that everybody likes you suddenly your business partner starts saying i don't understand you again it's not the business partner my brother a commitment from you has touched the heart of god and it sounded an alarm to the gates of darkness 
you see when you when when you understand how and why satan attacks then you will know why the power of god will continue to come around your life until victory is complete hmm. one day I, I can't remember where i was driving to sometimes i just drive in the night alone and sometimes i just move and then i parked somewhere around that market side and i was looking at someone just passing and the lord was telling me something about that guy and the lord was telling me that guy going i just saw the guy just moving and he said that guy the devil has rubbish that guy true story and that in this guy's destiny he was supposed to be the first preacher in his entire lineage and i saw the boy moving with all this these rough and scattered boys around and i was just looking i said my god if your life does not have a message that gives god glory you will beg satan to come he will run satan a demon goes to a wilderness and because there's nothing in that wilderness that has god's assignment the demon casts itself out of the wilderness back to a human being that god can use remember jesus said when a spirit leaves a man it goes to a wilderness he didn't find anything in that wilderness that is pro god and he left it back said i want the man because god can still use him i can tell you why satan is threatened by everything around you your worship does something to him your commitment does something to him when satan comes and sees our little children hearing the word of the lord he says what can i do to this family to stop them from coming for koinonia and the easiest way is can i cripple their finances because if there is no money there's no food to eat there's no transport and if there's no transport there will be argument between daddy and mommy you see that wise plan all of a sudden you find out that something that would have worked does not work again and he steps back and allows you to blame yourself and while the children are suffering they say sorry it's time for koinonia i say koinonia what and devil said that's it mission accomplished it was never about money that's why a lot of people say why is it that unbelievers who don't love god they are getting rich what in their life threatens satan it's not about I mean, look if you think it's about money and tea and bread and cars no sir satan was willing to give it to jesus he said jesus why go the long route just bow to me i will give you this meaning if satan if jesus bowed to satan all of a sudden even caesar will be dethroned and jesus could go and sit down and satan doesn't mind provided you are my boy enjoy everything you never the devil will never allow you to hold the hands of god and hold the hands of the blessing he will say choose one hold the blessing and leave god or hold god and leave the blessing the miracle service says you can hold both that's why we're here tonight yes sir that you can say i can still serve god and pay my siblings school fees because of the blessing of the lord i can still serve god and i don't need to go and collect any charm yet i will prophesy to nonsense and cast out any demon you see that listen you are here tonight i'm announcing to you very straight up what we are here for we are not here to waste our time we are here to stand in agreement with god i have seen how people in ignorance allow the devil to make nonsense out of their lives choose between raising a godly family or not getting married choose between being a very wealthy man or a pastor hello choose between being the first graduate from your village or being a popular musician anything that you can use to give god glory is what satan is looking for he will find you he will haunt you 
and if you do not understand the systems of the kingdom he will make sure that he makes nonsense out of your life and listen the moment he sees that your health and vitality and energy has been committed unto God he will now find a particular disease and program it across your lineage not you if you have headache that means it may just be that you need you just need some time to rest satan is too wicked to just give you a headache satan wants to program something you heard that dear lady cancer in um the grandmother just like faith can be transferred so you program it in a way that a young lady is just 35 36 and all of a sudden she's feeling what is this ah mama died of cancer now i'm having cancer tomorrow another person has cancer those people don't need healing they need deliverance it looks like it's healing ask jesus woman thou art loose first when you are loose then he laid hands on her he said now you, your body can participate but the real thing is the bondage in the spirit are we together now yes anything you see in your family that is not only you that is suffering you need to stand for them today oh. if you are the only one having it it may just be your not understanding your this and that but provided you are not the only one no your grandmother was raped by a stupid man your mother was raped by a stupid man you you were raped by a stupid man must you wait until your daughter is raped you stand up and say in the name of jesus someone paid your grandmother's dowry and ran away they paid your mother's dowry and ran away now somebody is wanting to pay your dowry and, and run away you stand and say lord this must end look let me tell you nothing changes until men get angry enough to say lord it must stop are we together yes it must stop how about finances look at me there are some of you here i don't mean to insult you and i don't mean to embarrass you but let me tell you the truth until god does something to your hand money will never stay in your hand i'm not talking about money you can be as intelligent as whatever i'm telling you it takes more than a good transaction to keep this thing because money like a human being has a spirit a soul and a body the spirit of money is mammon or the holy spirit there has to be a controlling factor the soul of money is the 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 intellectual system that brings the exchange the body of money is the physical thing you are holding so if all you are holding is just the physical thing you are a joker there is a spirit that can call what is in your hand and it will leave you it's true so the devil sees that this family wants to call upon the name of the lord and make sure that everybody remains poor can i tell you this and i don't mean to insult you but more than 60 percent of the people seated here your major prayer point corporately as a family is oh god let your heavens be open so that your supplies can come there may be other things but you will prefer supplies a thousand times than your leg that is paining you to be to be fine there is an agenda i've shared with you my vision i will continue to share it years ago i was praying i think i was uh, i can't remember what was happening and then my my ceiling just disappeared i didn't see a building again and the next thing i looked and i saw a giant creature mighty creature the eyes as big as the head of a man and then it was it looked like a dinosaur but the tail had its own life meaning you could disconnect the tail from the body and it would still be in existence and it was just fuming with red eyes looking at me and saying so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was the end that was when i agreed that prosperity is spiritual if all you have is a contract you are joking if all you have is a shop well done but you are in trouble 
if all you have is a good business you heard the testimony of this dear um wonderful man that came from koza that just shared here now estates and everything just given no it's not just a man that gave him there is a spirit behind it you need to be empowered to fail i hope you know that when you are failing consistently there is an anointing making that happen an anointing is simply an empowerment everybody hates you you are supposed to bless me as soon as i come you hate me i now go here and i'm too late it's not normal when the coincidences are too accurate there is a spirit making it happen someone calls you and says, please come let me give you something to pay the rent of your family the moment that statement happens the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call are you seeing that now and he leaves the office you arrive the office you find out the door is locked he says if the young man comes just give him two thousand to go back it's a lie the man did not leave something happened there is a spirit behind that operation how many of you have gone to to seek people over something that is so simple maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks three weeks you believe it's normal and then sometimes a man of god may pray for you and speak and you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there he was not there an angel kept him there this is how this kingdom operates your destiny helper the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you but because there is no spiritual connection my brother and my sister you can stay 15 years whereas the person ordained by God to lift you is just two blocks you will go to America and return back like a thief you will go to UK and return back like somebody that God hates but the day God decides to locate you you will be surprised is God speaking to us that's why we're here tonight you can be a man of God and like the gentleman who listened to discerning the body probably God has been telling you look your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy but you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years I will come for koinonia you will now say next week you will say Kai uh, ah I'm feeling cold let me just relax as soon as you want to travel your sister will just say ah, I just came on break let me tell you all those acting is a lie but there's something about the will of man the day you stamp your feet and say today I name today as my day of breakthrough the Bible said today if you hear his voice every day becomes your today until the day your faith says no tomorrow again it has to be today are we together so tonight I don't want you to sit down and waste your time you are hearing people testify my brothers and my sisters I tell you by the grace of God there is enough grace and power to turn your life to bring any it's not very difficult no it's just your connection stop the arguments the war that is happening in your head can God do this you can't leave Lagos leave the east leave the north and come and sit down you are wondering you believe that God brought you to waste your time no sir no sir I tell you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye oh can can the hepatitis go can this go we're talking God here we're not talking the the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital the God of heaven can that yoke go we are nine people in our family apostle nobody has a job it's not about the job the devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children those nine people the money from those nine people who empower a church to preach and save somebody who will become a mighty man and for the sake of that mighty man those nine people will remain poor it's not about the family hallelujah if satan had his way 
it will kill me crumble this ministry make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone if he can do that he can beat his chest and say i've tried ah but there's a song that says satan shame unto you you know the song don't sing it oh <laughs> we make our boast in the lord in the next few minutes we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place let me tell you first of october we'll let we'll let the devil know what is in nigeria he has tasted what is in america what is in russia what is in this and then you see your life change a miracle is a wonder that that the limit oh, hold his hands try to stop him two of you you know that game they used to play that you try oh yeah do it now yeah don't no don't, don't draw him too much sorry you are not very kind now watch this are you seeing that now this guy can be growing old every year you are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise let me tell you my assignment this is me now coming into this equation my my assignment is not to cut what is there my assignment is to carry this like this this one because you see I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way. One, that's number one. That's not all. Then my assignment is to turn you to the direction. That's where prophecy is powerful. And then turn what would have come to you from that delay if i leave you like this you are not oppressed but you are you still don't have breakthrough you are free from oppression but you have not entered your inheritance so you can't testify but whatever that is when it comes to you and you go to it and then i leave you my job is to and and the thing is that all these things happen through words the word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance and then by next week you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying god what is this what is this then two weeks later five people all barring in your family are saying ah i i i think i'm pregnant then you just remember ah what has happened a man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church and yet you see 10 people, 15 during a convention they grow to 30 by the time service is finishing there are 20 back and all of a sudden something happens and one spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday in a way that even the critics say I'm here in your church today to watch what happened and you said I never believed I would buy canopy for an overflow but the anointing God brought you here to change your life listen to me I repeat God brought you here to change your life he didn't bring you to just be happy that a program koinonia no this is a miracle service a miracle service is not a teaching service I will take out time and teach you but this is a miracle service there are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you, or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square, and I can argue because I'm not seeing it. But if you bring out a pocket square and I see it, this is the end of the argument. It would be stupid to still argue. At that point, you would let everybody know you are a madman. This is the result. Could it be that you have been talking too much? Let the anointing talk. I, I, will, I will build the house. I know God is faithful. I will do this. And God is saying, no. Moses only spoke small. And then the rod kept talking. You have been talking forever. Some of you, you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that God will give you. You stood before the Red Sea for forever. It refused to part. 
but God brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you my brothers and my sisters that that Red Sea will part and you will call your family and say finally we've been wondering how to build a bridge but we found an easier road that the river can part tonight I want you to know that God wants to do this number one because he loves you but number two there is a dimension of glory only your results can bring to him don't ever let anyone fool you hearing is our father glorified John 15 and verse 8 this is how I am glorified Galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says and they glorified God in me not that they glorified God on the throne they looked at my life they saw that God can do this you no father no mother who gave you the job who did you know from the top you're a man of God I used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher and you say my brother is what God can do if it is the Lord's doing it is marvelous For as long as your life is ordinary your ministry is ordinary your business is ordinary you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain let me tell you god takes away shame from our lives by giving us results did you hear what i said god does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody he does something in your life and he does it in a way like Julius Berger will build a house and put B. God will do it and put his signature. They'll say, no, this business cannot be human. I hear testimonies of people every time. The things that God does in and through their lives. A wonder please let your heart be open no don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time whether you are outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online whatever nation you are following just listen I believe him I may not claim I know everything about him but this God when God decides to stand up from his throne he said now arise from your throne God can stand up. Have you heard that the earth is his footstool? So when he decides to stand up and say, who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming? The Bible says, even the mountains keep like lambs. My God is mighty. Our own belief many times is the reason why God does not move. We come and sit down and pile up. Some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful. But you are there wondering, can you move, oh God, concerning my money? Can you move concerning my money? Can you move concerning my health? Can you move concerning my wife? And God is saying, yes, I can. I am willing and I'm able. And then the devil comes very quickly and says, if God could move. Did the man of God pray for you in, by March? Didn't your pastor fast seven days for you? And you say, it's true. Oh, that's the devil. Tonight, your faith must be open. Your faith must rise to the heavens to say, Lord, I don't want to leave this place just knowing I'm blessed. I want to know what happened to me. I want to hold a substance. God is speaking to someone here. This, this sharing the grace and saying, ah, were you blessed? Oh my God, miracle service was powerful. That's not a blessing, no. You can hold on to something and know that I left this place. What happened? The pain is gone. I left this place. What happened? That before the grace is shared, you check your phone and all of a sudden, a text that you have been waiting for for five years. Now, that's an evidence. This is what we are talking about. All of a sudden, you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach. You have been trusting God for that prophetic grace. And while the preaching is going, all of a sudden, your eyes are open. You are saying, so this is what the apostle is saying. And you are seeing the power of God touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you're saying my God I've gotten this Elisha knew when he got it Elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea 
Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the river parted. You are trusting God for the grace for revelation. That before the meeting is over, all of a sudden scriptures, it's as if it's an injection from your spirit. You are just connecting one revelation to this. And you're saying, I, I can't remember studying this. And then you discern that something is happening. Something is happening. That heaviness has gone. Where is the fear? Yesterday night I couldn't sleep. The fear of death is gone. Listen, Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. If you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it, if I ask this gentleman to give me water, I'm expectant. I'm not expecting a handkerchief. I'm expecting water. Anything I see that looks like water is attracting my attention. A double-minded man. Let that man not think he will receive anything from God. Thank God for people falling and flying up and down. But your eyes is stayed like a flint. Lord, I left Lagos this morning and I came here. I left Bielsa and I came here. My car almost had an accident. Lord, I would have been in a convention now as a man of God. I left it to be here. I'm looking for something. Let something come from heaven. And your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven. And all of a sudden, boom, I tell you, in one minute. I remember many years ago when I was standing in the rain at Bonke Crusade. There were crowds of people like this. I didn't know what who wore whether you wore red or green or blue my eyes were fixed Lord what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him what kind of man is this that no one criticizes him Abba, I didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone no when it came I knew that I got it I knew that I got it listen my brothers and my sisters you can know that the load has been lifted you can know that the prayer has been answered you can know that the project is a done deal are we together the grace is here more than available for you and whilst we begin to pray don't just watch others receive be sensitive you are the one who knows what you are here for are we together in one minute I'd like you to open your mouth and cry. Mention specifically, why are you here? Talk to the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Pray with all your heart. Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing. Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family. That pre-informs me that I will still need a second touch. A second touch over my family.
my loved ones are not born again lord i can't watch them go to hell like this don't be tired of praying please cry from the depth of your heart lord i'm not going back with this disease i'm not going back with this medical report no way no way no way i insist i'm not going back barren tired of miscarriages the universe what can you do what can you do Jesus you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus one more time creator Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? I want you to see the Lord lifting your burden. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able. I will continue to read it for you Isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us the messianic prophecy Jesus's own manifesto he's saying this is what I came to do Isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the Lord we're reading from verse 1 to 4 is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. For And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair waste cities, he says. The desolations of many generations. I like you to pray. Whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family, insist that tonight is the night when it will happen. Overflow one, pray. Overflow two, overflow three by the roadside. Those following from around the world, open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart.
Alléluia. Alléluia. The Lord just showed me something like a train. You know, a speed train, not like we have it now. Just like a train, just pass like this. And I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed. Listen, we are going to pray now. And like I always say, you'll find out when I pray, you're going to see people running around in and out. Please just guide them and bring them out. Ushers, whether you are an usher or not, the ushers can only do so much. I want to pray. Once I pray that prayer, listen, please, I don't want you to get, listen, please, hold on. I don't want, it, the idea is not about people falling down, carrying them. Please, let your spirit be open. Be open for when your word will come. Be open for when God will visit and locate you. That, that's, that's what you're here for. So I want to pray that prayer now. I'm seeing a lot of those people at overflow one a lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer are in overflow one the overflow outside you see let me tell you this when a man listen when a man does not have speed in his life you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do it it takes more than just power right Please help those in Overflow 1, my God. I'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at Overflow 1 outside. Now, listen. When there is no speed in your life, listen. Imagine that I have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and I'm tiptoeing on one leg. Am I moving? Yes, sir. But when will you arrive there? The pressure that you will mount on this leg, it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it. And so God, when he wanted Elijah to move, because he had already been delayed, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is, I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done. Three days. This powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years. It happened in three days. By the end of three days, Jesus had ascended, poured his blood, returned back. He was ready. He was now to launch the church. Big things don't have to take plenty time. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast. Are you ready now? Lift your hands. I want to pray. I will do the praying. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to shout Jesus, not you now. I'm the one shouting Jesus. I'm going to shout it and at the third time, I tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of God. Let me have those people out. Lord, you are bringing speed to your people. And I know that there are angels all around. It's time to change people's levels. And even as you have instructed me, oh God, as I declare that name that is above every other name, I pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position, that in the name of the God of heaven, an anointing will shift that person into his destiny. Jesus, that's number one. Mm. Jesus, that's number two. Get ready now. Shabalakata. Jesus let that anointing right now I shift man speed speed to your life oh God let every delay be broken now I command the spirit of delay be broken speed I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost help that woman please help that mama there 
please help them whether you are an usher or not speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the holy ghost Lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just, just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please I'm praying For some of you now, it's the same prayer, but it's no longer just for you. You may not be experiencing it, but your family needs speed. The anointing now is moving from individuals to families. Lord, where are the families that need the shift of the Holy Ghost? I decree and declare right now, I speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Families be shifted now. Speed, speed, speed. Speed, Kaparakoto Shegeta, Ebreketeketeketekete. I decree it, I declare it. I decree it and I declare it. Shapakato Katabala Katosh. No more delay. I stretch my hands I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this road I stretch my hands right now I move people God is moving people here I decree it I declare I decree I declare I decree I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it must work for you I shift you no more delay in your life this lady wearing hijab right now the lord is shifting you that lady in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the anointing of the spirit take away delay from your life right now in the name of jesus now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now I command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your mouth. yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions 
if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here i decree and i declare right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus and at the count of three everyone shout jesus as you shout jesus i see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen i command every devil and every activity of sorcery to live now one two three in the name of jesus i crush satan i crush his works inside outside i command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it is it possible as soon as i come close to you as soon as I come close to you, that fire, there is a judgment. Let them go now. I'm coming this way. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming this area, this direction. Let them go now. Release them. I come by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now. Let them go now. Release them. I'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach. Release them now. Let them go. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I stretch my hands here. Right now. The fire of God is setting people free now. Lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them now, lose them, lose them in the name of Jesus, lose them now. Those outside, lift your hands. God is about to set you free. Please, I'd like you to pray. Everyone praying. Enough is enough tonight. Everyone praying everyone pray now listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now Shakos Katanika, a ghetto Santa Ricata, a breketo Seketa, a Katoshe Kriaka, Manta Brekotos. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go now. The spirit of sorcery, I cause it now. The spirit of witchcraft, I cause it now. Please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Go, go, be free. I command that power by fire by fire by fire it leaves you now those of you here i want you to lift your hands overflow two overflow two lift your hands let me go to the front there enough is enough as i pass this place listen i want you to be very sensitive there is a strong anointing tonight overflow two Please help your neighbors. I'm only going to pass here right there. 
as soon as I come close to you, except God is not God, if there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now, in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils, go, 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 go. Let them go, go. Go now. Release them. Release them. Release them. Every covenant, release them. I break that power now. Now, now, now. Be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two, let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you, please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of three, overflow 3, all of you shout Jesus. One, two, three. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus. Bring them out. That devil must let you go today. My God, look at what God is doing in overflow three. Shaprakato shekete skaba emprakato koto shabaria. Look at what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me. I'm coming back. But I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow 3. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder. But that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen. But a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you, you will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream, someone will come to sleep with you. Or something will happen. Right now at the count of three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. 
let them go now total emancipation Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata brekatish. Now, now, all those who are under the anointing here outside, I pass a decree that every power that has held you, I speak as one send. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go, 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 let them go. Lose your hold over their lives. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Hallelujah. I'm inside this place now. And I'm standing in the spirit. I've not started impartation yet. But the Lord is showing me the number 12. And the Lord is saying there are 12 people here. There is a strong call upon your life. There is a mighty anointing. Lord, where are they? Shakatos kapakarikata. Drink of that wine. Mantekatos ketekekata. Shaprakata. A ministry of signs and wonders. Ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I'm still praying. The anointing of the spirit is still locating men. I don't know why God is talking about ministry. The call. Don't run away from the call. Don't run from the call. A ministry of signs and wonders. The Lord is telling someone, you are the liberator of your family. A ministry of signs. Signs, 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 signs. There are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders hallelujah main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing i'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and i stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what god is doing main auditorium i'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive I decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen I'm seeing oh my god the Lord is opening my eyes here I'm I'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father I don't know if I'm seeing something like a priest this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house I'm not saying you're a bad person please I'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three oh, oh, oh here Please, who is that person? Come. I want to break that thing now from your life. Please, quickly. Please make sure you hear what I say before you come. Just let, make way for them. The power of witchcraft. Young man. You're going to be a mighty man of God. I don't know you. Lift your hands. An anointing is coming upon you now. Huh? It will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder. Or let that anointing come upon him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus. I break that force now. I break that force now. I break that force now.
testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm praying listen I stretch my hands towards you and I speak I don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in Jesus name I'm stretching my hands why am I seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of Jesus Christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now hallelujah just two more things i'll do here whether i'm in this overflow or not i just stood here to show you that it makes no difference i know the larger congregation is here lift your hands all of you if you can just lift it as high to the heavens now i'm seeing you don't have to come out but i'm seeing keys in the spirit listen this is access to a new dimension and i'm seeing the number 44 just lift your hands you don't need to say anything father i stand as one sent those keys are locating families and locating people it may be a key that explains why things have not been working lord from the front to the back like a mighty wind whoever must receive that key receive it now receive it now receive it now in the mighty name of jesus christ let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of jesus i'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of jesus christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I release you my dear hold my hands to you I'm seeing that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the Lord is going to do in your life I decree and I declare it over your life I stand by the anointing and I pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of Jesus Emeka, who is Emeka? 
Emeka. I'm hearing a name Emeka. Overflow three here. I'm just talking to overflow three people. Emeka, Emeka. Please quickly, please quickly. Don't waste our time. Where is that gentleman? What's your name? I want to pray. What do you do? I'm going to pray for you. You are not from this place. You came for NYC. I want to pray. Lift your hands. Because I'm seeing, look at me. The Lord is giving you the grace for wealth. Huh? I want you to believe it. But every prosperity that does not have an assignment will end up destroying the people. You love Jesus with all your heart? I want to pray for you. It will surprise you the way God will begin to turn things around in your life. Father, change this gentleman's story in the name of Jesus forever. Overflow 3, I'm still praying. The spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people. I will count four at the fourth count. One, two, three. Where are they, oh God? Four. Nine people. Nine people. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. All of you open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything you desire. Overflow three. Open your mouth and decree. Open your mouth and decree. I'm seeing an anointing around here. Who is that person? I stretch my hands. I'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as I'm standing here. Father, let the chains be broken now. The anointing of the Spirit. Find that person. Let the chains be broken right now. 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 Be broken now. Please, everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Hold on. There's someone here. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your shame. I'm seeing light. As I was just passing, I just saw light. Two people. Let the anointing find those people now. Two people. Right now, I decree. Overflow two. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shame, reproach. Let it go now. Shame, reproach. Let it go now. Shame, reproach. Help them. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. I'm hearing a name. Who is Gabriel? Is there someone like that? You are wearing a maroon. You are wearing like maroon kaftan. Gabriel. Maroon Kaftan. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Do I know you? Lift your hands, my brother. God is about to change your life. God is about to turn your life around. Uh, where are you coming from? I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? What is... Is it Oleku or Aleku? What is that? Huh? Huh? Where are you from? Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you. Come quickly. Please. Low, low, low like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. What do you do, my friend? You are a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? 
my, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends, huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So, my friend, you love God, eh? But you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out. Huh? Don't be embarrassed. When I make the altar call, you need to run and come quickly. Jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to. Just for, No, 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 no. Let, let's take God serious and take him. Look what I see, my friend. I see God turning your life in a way that will surprise you. But friends, and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone. It's a message to many of us. Because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of a hit or fail God may be calling you to a great ministry, but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life. I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus, if you are under the yoke of wrong friends, I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, there is favor on your life, but it's not speaking at all. Hmm? You are a nice lady. Come. I'm looking at you. I'm seeing a young lady, but I'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back. See, wickedness is real. Oh. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, wickedness is real. Huh? This is a young, beautiful lady. You see her standing, but you now look at it. Do you know? Let me explain something. Whatever overflow, just listen. I want to explain something. You see? This is the mistake that we men of God make sometimes. I can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman. And if my word base is not sound and balanced, I will, I will interpret the vision I've seen verbatim and now call her a witch. You see the mistake we make? That we call people and then assuming now they are married, I will now advise him and say, Mr. Man, you married a witch. Oh. You, do you know what it means to be a witch? <laughs> So God is, you see that God is, is balancing a lot of things in our lives. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we may see a vision. I already know what is happening. It is true that the lady needs help. But it doesn't mean, imagine that I look at this lady now and say, my dear, you're a witch. No, this is a lovely, she has a beautiful heart. I already see by the spirit. Very beautiful heart. But it, beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression. It takes the power of God. How terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. So many of you are here. You find out, for instance, the moment you enter a relationship, come for instance, as you mean, I enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me. Have you seen that happen? I'm doing well in business, but just because I married this lady, I start going down. And now you meet a man of God and if, the man, if you are in ministry here, please be careful. You have to trust God for grace to be balanced. Are we together? I can now look at this lady and say, Ah, your wife is the reason behind your failure. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, Oh, there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands. But it doesn't mean she's bad. A good man of God will bring about that separation. And then through the transforming power of the word, now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why 
good things don't come to you. You are a very nice lady. Hold my hands. Father, hold it with both of your hands. I decree and declare. Ah! Halushia kaprahasku de bakatuskia. I'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of Jesus. I command this devil I'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now. My dear, I set you free and I open the door of favor for you right now. Please, everybody, lift your hands. I'm seeing, I've not seen this in a long time. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing an anointing going to Benway State. Benway State now. Benway State. You are from Benway State. You see that that power will touch you. Even if you don't know what state you are from. Benway State. Lord, where is In the name of Jesus. The power of God is bringing deliverance. Benway State. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. Two things. I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke complete stroke the devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe but we're going to destroy that now in the name of jesus hold my hands i decree and declare be free now by the power of the holy spirit madam i don't know you but ah you please come ah. this is your first time coming i need to pray for you what do you do ma you are jobless ma Huh? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed I hope I'm not embarrassing you I want to pray for you I give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you I lay my hands right now and I declare I'm seeing chains leaving you I command those chains to go father turn her life around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Hold on. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open that closed door now. I open that closed door now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everyone, open your mouth and pray. The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now, I uproot it now, I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest. I served, my father served and died. And Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus. Let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus. Every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man. But I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too. Priest, you? Your dad? Your father is a priest. Currently. Oh, where? Oshun State. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here because Jesus wants to help you. Lord Jesus, 
it is not your will that any man perish but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth i deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i set you free now be gone now out let it leave her i'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life but in the name of jesus Hi. jesus power is really super power really super power that in one moment something that has been done in a lifetime can live out now everything that is not of god her father is a priest or not her uncle direct father imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things but in jesus name you are set free this this man too why is he here look at my eyes just look at my eyes you are receiving the healing anointing now in the name of jesus christ lord grant him access to the healing anointing your healing power now oh dear our time is gone this is sometimes i honestly wish that this this because there are so many things i see but we have to work with time this lady you come hurry up now please come uh, we're out of time wonderful lady look at me you are a savior to your family you hear what i said you are a savior you may look small but you are a savior to your family the only thing is that you need to continually be serious with god your heart with him your heart with him hold my hands father in the name of jesus i take away distraction from her life right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away distraction i take away distraction I, we have we've not even prayed for the sequel my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from you are coming from abuja yes, i'm here with my husband husband yeah. where are you sir let's clap for the husband <laughs> two of you came from abuja Last time you came with for som came. i can't remember you came with your oh your son was a graduate of som no we came with him oh okay so I'm a graduate I want to pray. What do you do, sir? Um, I'm a minister of God, but at the same time, I do business. But it's not sir, working. I want to pray for you. Eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing. You will start having dreams. Receive that grace. Two of you need empowerment. Ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir look at me hold my hands hold my hands just hold it with both of your hands in the name of jesus i transfer grace signs and wonders strange testimonies your business between now and 30th of november sir your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you you will come back and testify in the name of jesus christ this man waving your hands come together with that woman by your side who is she come please two of you quickly let's appreciate them as they come oh, oh, oh. you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh 
I'm seeing you like this and I'm seeing a load on your head. And if I don't pray for you, this load is going to destroy you. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? Are you new here? By Elsa. By Elsa. Hmm. All the way. I think we should appreciate them. What do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You're in ministry, both of you? Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate. Evangelist. But both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You're are an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church? Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere? Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja? Yes. And then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you. Because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things. The grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you're an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio and then. Oh, you do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things one, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady, this one, this one, this lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator, the same way you are watching, me too I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelist my hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus, supernatural grace. Drink of that wine, sir. I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership, the grace for finance. But I'm, ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. Sir, what am I seeing? This is somebody, it's, it's not directly the government. But this is somebody that is connected to the government. The Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life. And I decree and I declare your life turns around from today in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness, 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 goodness. Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus. Be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus. You go and write your test. Bring back your results. Go. Listen. 
I, can we? Our time is gone. Oh dear. You see how sometimes this thing, we are really constrained. That's why we do our best. The healing anointing is already flowing. God wants to heal. Maybe I'll just pray. I'll just pray for the sick from here. We'll do it that way. Right? But make no mistakes. Just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now. We'll take a few testimonies now. In the last three or four months, I have seen, I don't know why this happens, but I have seen a dimension of the healing power of God. Very creative miracles. So I want to pray. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hand right now on your body quickly. I want to pray for you now. Please believe God for a miracle. Now, this is what will happen. Overflow. One, two, three. The roadside. And then those following us online. Our time is gone. But as soon as I pray for you now. I pray for you. The power of God is going to come upon you. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Praise the Lord. We may not take all the testimonies. But since we have chosen this method now. As soon as I pray, I ask you to check yourself. You will be surprised what has happened to you. And whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I'm going to ask you to run very quickly. You're going to come right here. Pastor Jimmy will be here with Pastor Alpha. They will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and I'll just confirm that. Um, how many of you brought your prayer request? Let me see. Did you bring your prayer request? Okay, ushers, this is what you, I want you to do. PR department, help them. Protocol, please help them. While I'm praying for the sick, I think we can do it too. Your prayer request, please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers just lift it the ushers have a system of collecting it you don't have to be rowdy those outside you can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion you can have that very quickly please lay your hands now i want to pray jesus A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed, my God. The power of God is touching people already. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three by the roadside. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now I command every blood condition. Be healed from it now in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer. The Lord is healing ulcer right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lumps. All kinds of lumps. Multiple lumps. I command those devilish lumps to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis. The Lord is healing hepatitis right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Eye conditions. In the name of Jesus. You're going to feel fire just come to your eyes. 
be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones I decree and declare let the power of God touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands be healed right now in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are that sound the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of Jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether I mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you I stretch my hands and I declare be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before i started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside i'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our facebook page or you can find a way to post it i want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, make your way. Some of you, you get up under the anointing, you find out that the pain, there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding. Go and check yourself. The bleeding is gone. Gone completely. And I'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest. It's just lifted. Gone like that. Please check yourself very quickly and come. We may not take all the testimonies, but at least let's take a few. While we are doing that, let me have all the prayer requests very quickly. God bless you. Check yourself quickly. Koinonia, are you celebrating Jesus? The Lord is touching people. Show them where to come. Look at, look at God touching people already. Please make your way. Make your way. The power of God has touched you. Those outside, overflow one, overflow two. Clear the way for them. Just come. You can stand on the queue there. And let's have one or two testimonies. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating miracles here? Yeah make your way be bold don't be ashamed make your way as soon as the power of god has touched you back pain since hold last on, year hold on just a moment please all make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected please i want you to wave it jesus is still healing people you just come join the queue god bless you yes please back pain since last year can healed. you sit for a, a few minutes just sit for a few minutes and then we're done let's just hear the testimonies if as you are hearing the testimony god is still healing people and I want you to make your way and then come to. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Alpha. My God, the... God is still touching people. I'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three. Overflow three. Check yourself right now and make your way. Yes, please. You go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain. She's been having the problems this last month, back but pain. she's healed now. How long come, my dear? Let's have another mic, please. Anytime we're doing this, please, technically, it should be a standard procedure. You should know what we're doing, please. So that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck Check it now. You'll be surprised to find out it's gone. Gone completely. Gone completely. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Gone completely. In Jesus' name, I declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in Jesus' name. Give Jesus praise. Deafness in the left ear since 2012. Since 2012. Oh, come on, Koinonia. How long, my friend? A man of God told me about it in 2012 when I prayed, but I was hearing those B sounds. And I don't hear really. Which of them? put your hand there now in the name of jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes also you mentioned also how long yes. okay where are you from kaduna state that's where you are from your state of origin 
No, biologically. Biologically, where are you from? I'm from each Patal Court. I mean, I'm from State. Oh. There's a reason why I said this. There's a lot. You don't know where you are from. There is a long story. Leave the issue of healing now. Where eh? I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Huh? Look at me. Where are your parents? Who are you staying with? My mom and my, my stepdad at Kaduna. Okay, it's okay. I'll talk to you, eh? Father, help this gentleman. Because this gentleman is a great gentleman, but there is a lot I'm seeing in your life. I crush the hand of darkness over your life now. And I declare be free in Jesus' also, name. Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, God but as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the, the lower back pain. It affected her left leg also. This pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain? Yes, it's gone completely. Give the Jesus last three praise. years. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your own, wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back, completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. I ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing and your destiny arises, it's a wise baguette. Is that true? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, never again in your life. The power of God is coming on someone in overflow one. Overflow one. Please carry the person and bring the person. Overflow one. The overflow by the roadside. Overflow two. Sorry. Overflow two. I meant to say. Ah, look how powerful the power of God is. I said overflow one and nothing happened. I just said overflow two. Then I now went to say. She's had pain on the left, left shoulder since How long, my dear? Seven. Let her talk. How long? Seven. 2007. You've had what? I've had this pain. It will come and go, come and go. But today it has been intense. But when you mentioned the case, the pain left. It's gone completely. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Up, down. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray, but the person I'm talking about is overflow two. Overflow two. The overflow by the roadside. So you bring the person. In the name of Jesus. Perfection for you right now. In Jesus' name. She's had serious um, back pain. That back she pain. Had to start horse riding so that you can correct. But today they asked you to ride a gone. horse. Yes. Who said you should ride a horse? The doctor? Nah. Or just advisors? <laughs> don't, don't She's shy. <laughs> the horse. This is the man. It's amazing how you come for Koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carrying you and you are wondering, where am I going to? Hi. The anointing. Amazing. Let me just talk to them and then don't worry do your horse thing eh i'm just happy that you are healed so you can go and ride your horse now for fun in the name of jesus you are perfected completely perfected in jesus name i take away this proverb called ikabod over your life and over your family i'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too in the name of jesus i set you free and i decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life it will no longer be Ichabod in Jesus' name. I'm coming here, but you are the one I'm talking to. Where eh? Debbie, it's not the this person. You hold this one. Don't worry, they will hold her. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying He is going to use you to change everything in your family. It will be like a dream, but He is going to use you. He's making you a savior over your family. Don't ask how it's going to happen. It's by the anointing. The Spirit entered me. When he speak unto me that God is going to use you and change everything in your family. In the name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead. She's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating. 
that resulted in serious back pain. How old are you now? Pain this evening. Sir? How old are you now? 21. 21? And she's had severe menstrual pain? Yes. And she came here with the pain today. But Don't the pain believe is gone. that thing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cancel it forever. Amen. Say amen. amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness? In the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache. And as you prayed for her, it totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's... The heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as you prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back. Eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Huh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card. Eh? Yes, Send it to your mother to bless her okay. and watch what happens in your life. Yes. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing. But you watch what that play will do in your life. In she had ulcer, peptic ulcer. As she prayed for her, she was totally... Peptic healed. ulcer. How long? I'm here now. Put your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, peptic ulcer goes back to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Feel, press it press it any pain no pain gone completely no. come on koinonia may god forgive you may god you people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that god bless you he had a sharp pain in his left side okay you mentioned it and then he also used to experience dizziness that he would just be standing be dizzy and then slump but as you prayed for him he was totally you just slump like that yeah they may even have to catch it it happened, it happened once august august 26 you just slump like that yes i was falling and then my brother caught me come what if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire the devil would just wait until you are crossing a bridge then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal to kill and to destroy in jesus name i set you free you are free now you are free forever in jesus name back pain disappeared he's had back pain for a long time back pain sir now. yes in jesus name let it go and go forever never to return again in sometimes the two eyes go blind other times only the right one go blind but now he's totally healed he can see with both eyes have you gone to the hospital for this but sometimes you just go blank like that come in the name of jesus put your hands on your eyes i decree and declare perfection it's not just the bones are what give structures to a person doctors tell us that means that by this miracle god is speaking through it right like he's doing the miracle of ezekiel 37 the bones coming back be a restoration of it in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you yes please go ahead so back pain he came here with waist pain sorry waist pain he came here with how long serious pain 2014 and now he's gone. try to turn it's gone he Completed. squatted for me and um, no squat you've not you did it for him yes. you didn't do it for me ah, it looks like a footballer gone and gone for Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 